Nmap. Let's start with the king, Nmap, short for Network Mapper. Think of it as a digital sonar. You send out pings, and Nmap listens for replies. It shows you which devices are connected to a network, which ports are open, and what services are running. If a network were a hotel, Nmap is the guy walking down the hallway, knocking on doors, seeing who answers. Room 80? That's a web server. Room 22? That's SSH. Room 445? Probably Windows file sharing. Simple, powerful, and legal, as long as you use it inside your own lab. Wireshark. Next up, Wireshark, the network's microscope. While Nmap asks, who's there? Wireshark says, let's see what they're saying. It captures and displays raw packets, every tiny message traveling across your network. It's like reading digital postcards mid-flight. You can literally see what websites are being visited, what protocols are chatting, and sometimes even unencrypted passwords. If that sounds creepy, it is. That's why we use it only in a test lab, to understand how traffic really flows. It's one of the best tools to actually see the internet in action. Metasploit. All right, meet Metasploit, the toolbox inside the toolbox. If hacking were a movie, this would be the secret agent's briefcase, full of gadgets. It's an exploitation framework, meaning it's used in labs to test how systems respond to known vulnerabilities. You don't need to run exploits. That's not our game here. What matters is understanding how vulnerabilities are categorized and how payloads work. Metasploit is like learning martial arts. You study the moves so you can defend against them, not use them in a street fight. Burp Suite. Ever wonder what happens between your browser and a website when you click login? That's what Burp Suite reveals. It's a web proxy, meaning it sits between you and the internet, letting you inspect and modify web requests before they go out. For ethical hackers, it's like reading a conversation between a user and a web app. Hey, here's my password. Cool, logging you in. You can spot flaws, insecure cookies, or misconfigured forms. And yes, the free community edition is more than enough to learn how the web really communicates under the hood. Aircracken. Okay, wireless fans, this one's for you. Aircracken G is a suite of tools used to study Wi-Fi network security. It captures wireless packets, analyzes them, and helps you understand encryption types like WPA2 and WPA3. Now, a quick reminder, don't go scanning your neighbor's Wi-Fi. Instead, set up your own test network. Even a cheap router will do and experiment legally. Learning how Wi-Fi encryption works teaches you how to protect your own network better than any YouTube guru ever could. Hydra. Hydra sounds dangerous, and that's kind of the point. It's a password login testing tool. Basically, it tries different username password combinations to see how easy it is to guess credentials. Think of it as testing how strong your lock is by knocking with every key in the keychain. Ethical hackers use it to prove why password 123 should never exist again. Use it only on authorized systems, your own local servers, CTF challenges, or lab VMs. John the Ripper and Hashcat. Next, two legendary names, John the Ripper and Hashcat. Both are password hash analysis tools. They don't steal passwords. They test the strength of hashed ones. Think of a hash like a scrambled version of a password. These tools try to reverse weak ones, not for evil, but to teach why strong passwords matter. You can use test hashes in a controlled lab, see how different algorithms behave, and realize that even one missing capital letter can make a password a thousand times easier to guess. Nikto. Now let's talk about Nikto, the web server detective. Nikto scans websites to identify common security issues, outdated software, exposed directories, or missing headers. It doesn't hack. It just reports what's wrong. You know how your doctor checks your vitals before suggesting treatment? Nikto does that for websites. It's the first step in finding problems before bad actors do. Run it on your own servers or local labs. It's a great way to understand web hygiene. Enum for Linux. Enum for Linux sounds like a game, but it's actually about information gathering. It's used to enumerate, or map out, Windows and SMB services on a network. Basically, it asks, what users exist here? What shares are open? What policies are set? It's the detective of the bunch, collecting clues before any action happens. And once again, learning this helps defenders understand what data is too exposed internally. SQL Map If you've ever seen the term SQL injection, this is the tool that helps researchers test it. SQL Map It automates the detection of database vulnerabilities in test environments. But remember, you don't run this on real sites. You use lab apps like DVWA, Damn Vulnerable Web App, 
to see how queries can be exploited and fixed. Understanding SQL Map conceptually teaches you one big thing. Never trust user input in your web apps. That's the golden rule of secure coding. Auspzap. Meet Zap, the open source sibling of Burp Suite. It's developed by Auspip, the same community that maintains the top 10 list of web vulnerabilities. Zap scans for common web flaws, cross-site scripting, misconfigurations, insecure cookies, and visualizes everything neatly. It's beginner-friendly, open source, and a perfect place to start learning about web security scanning. Plus, the name Zap just sounds cooler. Netcat. Finally, the unsung hero, Netcat, or NC. Netcat is the Swiss army knife of networking. You can use it to create simple connections between devices, send data, check open ports, and even transfer files. If computers could talk, Netcat would be their walkie-talkie. It's insanely powerful for debugging and learning how raw network communication really works, all in one simple command line tool.